Let's do it. Hey, where's the judge? Wait, what the fuck? Where is the judge? <laughs> oh, he's like hiding. Okay. I suppose we should reconvene the trial of Solomon Starbuck or something. Objection! Uh, your honor, could you please come out from under your bench? There are no more bombs. I promise. That's what you said last time. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, <clears throat> my apologies. I'm still a little jumpy when it comes to trials involving bombs. Why? I mean, first the courtroom exploded. And then Mr. Tonate self-destructed. I guess that's one way of describing what happened to Tonate. Sure. Anyway, it seems that Mr. Justice was seriously wounded by Mr. Tonate's actions. Though so you, Mr. Wright, will be taking up the defense. You have an understanding of what has happened in the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. The defense is ready. Very well. Is the, uh, prosecution also ready? Hmm? I take it you'd like me to give the opening statement this time? Looks like the judge has become a pretty good mind reader. Well... Certainly seen more than his fair share of colorful prosecutors. I could say he's something of a veteran of sort. I mean, he's fucking old. Yeah, sure, Phoenix. You can say he's fucking old. Let's see. Ahem. In the previous part of this trial, we learned that the victim, Clay Tarrant, escaped from launch pad one carrying the defendant, Solomon Starbuck. There were explosions on the second floor of the Space Center and on the rocket itself. The two astronauts used the Launch Pad 1 corridor to reach the boarding Langer. And... How could the victim climb down the ladder if he was carrying the defendant? That was the mystery that needed to be solved. But Mr. Justice proved that the victim was killed in the boarding lodge. Prosecutor Blackwell, were you able to discover any new facts related to this point? Upon further investigation, we discovered an oxygen tank fragment in the lodge. Surprisingly, it would appear that Justice Dono's argument was correct. So that means the testimonies of the first two people on the scene are suspect. <clears throat> there were two people who claimed to be the first on the scene. Can we truly trust their statements? Let's see. The two people were Detective Candace Arm and Yuri Cosmos, right? <clears throat> you think that one of them might have given a false statement to the police? Yes, it's certainly possible. We might have to do a little more digging. And just as our team was about to cross-examine Detective Arm, the courtroom bombing incident occurred, and the trial was put on hold. Okay, yeah, so in case it's not clear, this is happening in between, or case one happened between day one and day two of this trial. Yes. <clears throat> uh, correct. That accursed fellow. He killed my witness. He killed Detective Arm. 
They definitely put the kibosh on anyone asking her about what she saw. Exactly. In other words, the question of who killed the victim in the boarding loge has once again become the main focus of this trial. It's obvious Prosecutor Blackwell still thinks it was Mr. Starbuck. Fulbright said Blackwell has a thing against the astronaut. Nevertheless, the defense argues that the third the, the defense argues that there was a third person in the lingerie, and that's who killed the victim. Objection! Hmm. To make such reckless claims in a courtroom takes a bold man. Or a stupid one. There was no third person in the boarding lingerie. Or have you gone dotty already? Old man. Literally. Oh, he's talking to you, Zach. Literally not that much older than you, Blackwell. Like 28 to what? 34 Phoenix is now? Uh, Phoenix isn't even a fucking. He doesn't have a profile. He's not in this case. Even though we're actively playing. <laughs> he's not in this game. He's not in this game. <laughs> <Not> in... <laughs> God damn it. Who the fuck is Phoenix, right? <laughs> Objection! We'll see who's the daughter after I trounce you with my years of experience, little boy. That's so... no. <laughs> <laughs> no, Phoenix. Don't do that. In any case, Mr. Starbucks... <laughs> Damn it, I said it. In any case, Mr. Starbuck <laughs> claims he saw someone leaving the lounge. Furthermore, a Space Center employee also saw a suspicious figure at the scene. They say it. They saw a third person. Hmm. I see my sister has been running her mouth. That's right. I almost forgot that Aura is Prosecutor Blackwell's sister. Literally how? No matter. She didn't see this mystery person's face clearly. Therefore, there is no evidence to indicate that this person was not the defendant. Hmm. I guess the possibility that the figure was Mr. Starbuck is still there. In brief, we need to determine if a third person was there or not. To this end, we should hear the testimony of the one of the first people on the scene. Director Cosmos, huh? I mean, yeah, let's get him on the stand so we can tell him that he's a liar. Eviscerate him. Very mm. well. Bailiff, please bring the witness to the stand. I was going to say, he's still going to be riding his thing on the stand, Absolutely isn't he? Absolutely he is, Bridge. Of course. Good, Why, good. I believe I've seen you before in the newspapers. Of course you have. Of course you have, for I am Yuri Cosmos, director of the Cosmos Space Center, which was, of course, named after me, Yuri Cosmos. Uh, don't you have anything you wish to ask me? Looks like he's hard. All geared up to do some bragging. Seven years ago, I successfully launched the Hat One, and... Everyone already knows how brilliant you are. Even I am trying to hold back my tears at seeing such a great man standing before me. I do appreciate that he is not above, like, such base flattery, because he knows it's going to work on this guy, like... Uh, so, could you please proceed directly to your important testimony? I see this fine young lad has a proper appreciation of greatness. Then allow me to begin my epochal testimony that will be recorded in the 
annals of history. <laughs> Sorry, the what? The annals of history. <laughs> That's what I said the first time. No Good need to so check nice. the court log. That speech of Prosecutor Blackwell just now... It sounded more like he was poking fun at Director Cosmos. You think? It's probably okay. for the best that it sailed right over the Director's head. Now oh, then, Director Cosmos, the, co the condensed version of your illustrious testimony. Please. What I saw at the scene. Detective Arm and I rushed towards the boarding lingerie together. We went via the control room and peeked in from there to see what was going on inside. We saw a figure standing in the middle of the lingerie and Taryn lying on the floor. I hate to say it, but I can only imagine the standing figure must have been Starbuck. But you didn't see Starbuck. I see. So, in your testimony, you claim you arrived on the scene after the two had escaped from the launch pad to the lingerie. And just after the victim had been killed. Oh, the horror! The humanity! But what I said is what I saw, and what I saw is what I said. <laughs> okay, Horton, though. An elephant faithful 100%. <laughs> Courageous action to take in the face of such terrifying explosions, wouldn't you say? To save my men, I went personally into the epicenter of danger. Risking my own life for theirs! <laughs> but, but you didn't go into the room, right? Well, what do you know? It sounds like the director really cares about men. His men. <laughs> Old man Yowie. Good, good joke, Bridge. No, my name is Yuri Cosmos. <laughs> Yeah, although it sounds more like he was just scared and... Or it sounds more like he was scared and just had a peek from far away. At... at men. <laughs> Is the defense ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. Director Cosmos' testimony is pretty vague. Going to have to press him and draw out more information before I do anything else. Thank you, video game. <laughs> okay. Um, rush towards the boarding lingerie. Want to be the control room. I'm more interested in the later two st statements. Saw a figure standing in the middle of the lingerie. Uh, press. Hold it. So, you couldn't see who that figure was. You couldn't see who that figure was clearly, or what they were doing. Sadly, the only thing I could tell was that it was a person standing motionless. The defendant, no doubt, staring aghast at his deed. What other explanation is there? Uh, I'm so close! Without evidence, I can't prove that third person's identity. Or th that person's a third party. I don't relish this. I don't relish in this. Um, but do you mustard in this? <laughs> but do you cumin in this? You attorneys, try and catch up. Ah. Well, hot dog, you've caught us again. <laughs> Hold it! Nacho cheese! <laughs> <laughs> Aura Blackwell also saw a suspicious figure in the lingerie. She gave the statement that it was too dark to see the pe person's face clearly. Did you see this figure's face clearly? No, not 
clearly. The lighter they were holding illuminated the area around their feet at the time. But I got a good look at those piggies. <laughs> but I'm saying, so you were focused on man on a man's feet, eh? Oh, damn it. <laughs> If you show me their wiki feet profile, I can compare it with 100% accuracy. God damn it. <laughs> forensic but... feet. Forensic feet fetish. <laughs> <laughs> the next step of the, the next advancement. Prosecutor Blackwell. We need a foot fetish examination pronto. We're calling in our foot expert, Yuri Cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but other than that, I could see little else. That's why I could see Taran, but I couldn't see who the other person was. Taran had shoes on, by the way, in case you were wondering. <laughs> I was focused on that. So for all you know, it might not have been Mr. Starbuck. Isn't that correct? I would like to believe that. Starbuck isn't the type of man who's capable of murder. <laughs> Fuck. Long Socks in the chat says, I knew a prisoner with a thing for feet once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. God damn it. Objection! When the witness entered the boarding lounge, there was no third person there. Isn't that correct, Great Space Center Director? Yes, that's right. Only Starbuck and Taran were there by that time. After we peeked in, the lingerie suddenly went dark and the figure vanished. You mean they disappeared? That's odd. Objection! The reason the figure disappeared to vanish is because it was the defendant. When the witnesses weren't looking, he fell to the floor and feigned unconsciousness. Hold it! Hold on. Director Cosmos, did you ever take your eyes off the scene? Just for a brief instant, uh, about as long as it takes for a shooting star to go by. If you took your eyes off the scene, then this third person could have escaped during that time. But what escape route could this person have used? The direction opposite of the control room, the southern door to the elevators. No security lock on that door, so it would have been possible to escape that way. Objection. All things are possible, right? Do the Lord. <laughs> Put your faith in her, and all things are possible. <laughs> uh, progressive, oh, wow. Progressive, Christian progressive Blackwell. Blackwell. <laughs> If we're just talking possibilities, we could each profess whatever we'd like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An inmate who used to be a university professor and lunar researcher used to say... What did they say, Blackwell? Please fucking enlighten me. That there is a kingdom of little green men who live under the surface of the moon. Well, I hope they lost their fucking tenure. What a wild thing to say. As long as... Oh, Sailor Moon reference! Hey, that's as long as they don't that. punish us in the name of said moon for what we've done to it. But I say, where's your proof that this quaint kingdom exists? He's calling your theory a work of fiction, boss. Yeah, I know. And he's right. I don't have any proof yet. Still, the southern door was a possible escape route. I better make a mental note of that. 
Director Cosmos, may I, may I ask you a question? Yes? Why did you look away from the boarding launch, Ha ha ha! There's actually another tale of bravery behind the answer to that. It was when Detective Arms saw the figure and raised her gun. Being a great humanitarian and protector of mankind, I tried to stop her. What? You're saying Detective Arm raised her gun as soon as she saw the figure? Yeah, why, this is huge news. What the fuck? I imagine her instincts as a detective told her they were the killer. Hmm. I don't know about that. And were you able to prevent Detective Arm from firing her gun? I'm afraid I was too late. Yeah. I was unable to stop her. I was really hoping that he would be like, oh yeah, I stopped her. We'd go and be like, okay, you're fucking, we got your ass, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does that, that proves something, doesn't it? That they came in from like a different way? Because the bullet hole was like, well, the bullet hole isn't where they're saying they entered from. It's right? the weird thing where like, there's two bullet mark, where there's like a small bullet in that great and then there was like the bigger bullet impact on the the screen uh, that we didn't find the yeah. actual bullet for so it's it's there's something going on she identified herself clearly and then she fired two warning shots at the shadowy figure This information about Detective Arm's action sounds critically important. Please add it to your testimony. Okay. Detective Arm fired two warning shots at the figure. Well... I mean, it doesn't quite make sense, because we do know that there's this bullet hole, but we did only find one bullet at the scene. I think one of those has got to be correct. Yeah. I mean, it's weird because like it would be the bullet them, hole. Neither of them prove that only. Neither of them prove that statement wrong, but like they're clearly trying to angle us. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, 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 yeah, we only found one impact of a bullet, maybe like. Even if the other bullet isn't there. Yeah, I guess that's true that we didn't find an impact of it. Uh huh. Objection! Hey. Are you sure that you were really paying attention to what Detective Arm was doing? <laughs> you doubt my words? Words that will someday be written down in history books? It's incredible. No one's gonna, no one's gonna write down what you said in this. No one's gonna write uh, that one. Like this court case. Court stenographer, get case. fucked. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Not in the history books. Though. You know what? You got me on that one. Vroom, 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 vroom. Somehow, I don't think that those exact words will ever be written down in any history books. Yeah, I did it again. You did, Mister Wright. Could you please explain yourself so that we can all understand? What's a history book? <laughs> What's a book? <laughs> you say that the de that Detective Arm fired two warning shots, and yet only one bullet was ever found at the scene. What? Only one bullet hole means the gun was only fired once. And yet, Director Cosmos is saying Detective Arm fired two shots. No editor, no editor would allow such a glaring contradiction into a history book. Objection. Unfortunately for you, the witness's words are true. We confirmed that two shots were fired from Detective Arm's gun. Objection. Did she hit the person? There was only one bullet hole at the scene. Where did the other bullet hole vanish to? Yeah! And as always, then Von Karma's shoulder. 
you ever have a missing bullet, just check on Karma's shoulder. <laughs> this baby can hold you so many have. bullets. Slaps <laughs> <laughs> on Karma's shoulder. And then he goes, Oh, don't touch that. <laughs> You should know the answer to that already. I should? During the previous trial, a certain oxygen tank was presented as evidence. Oh. We've already discussed that it was ruptured in the Langer, have we not? Well, it appears that the thing that ruptured it was a bullet. A bullet that was found near the tank, to be precise. This bullet was fired from a 38 caliber gun. Okay, the then who fired? Caliber as detectives as the detectives the gun. Fuck? Then who fired the then who fired the 10? So 10. Yeah, right? specifically yeah. a 10. Yeah, then who fired the who fired the 10 then? Mm. What? Okay. <laughs> oh, never mind. I figured it out. Can't disarm dual wields. Hell yeah. Oh. <laughs> she ran out there with a 38 and a 10 and fired one from each. What, like, I can that's get all, the dual that's wielding. Also why, that's also why they missed so badly. Cause she was trying to dual wield. <laughs> I was say, dual wielding I can get, but the idea that you would use two extremely <laughs> different <laughs> calibers of pistol is insane to me. <laughs> the rifling marks also match up. The ballistic markings of a gun? Oh, There's no the question that the bullet was fired from Detective Arm's gun. And the best part is, if you take away Candace Arm's gun. God guns, damn it! Hey, they said it! Yes, let's go! Wow, gamers! Rifling marks. They're like a gun's fingerprints on a bullet, correct? And examining the rifling marks on a bullet can tell us the gun it was fired from. Very good, Your Honor. One of the bullets the detective fired found its way into the holographic image display. Um. The other bullet came to a stop near the victim's oxygen tank. The evidence confirms the director's statement that the detective fired two shots. My beautiful contradiction. Gone. Oh, God. Oh. So that bullet hole was from a 38 caliber, huh? I better update the record. Okay, so now we have a 38 cut. I do love that it is exactly the same model, just upsized. Bigger! <laughs> Show us the enlargement. Very good. Now we know the fate of both of the shots Detective Arm fired. Mr. Wright, does that clear up all of your questions? Hmm. Detective Arm fired two warning shots. One hit the holographic display, and the other hit the oxygen tank. Does that really clear up everything about what happened at the scene? No. This is a smaller bullet. Come on. You're the program. No, Your Honor, it doesn't. Detective Arm fired two warning shots from a 38 caliber gun. But that doesn't explain the existence of a certain piece of evidence found at the scene. A piece... It points to the existence of a third person. Oh. Very well. But it won't do to keep us waiting, Mr. Wright. What piece of evidence suggests the... You found it where... In a floor gutter at the crime scene. Looks like the police and prosecution both missed it. Furthermore, this is a 10 caliber bullet, making it much smaller than the one of Detective Arm's 38 calibers. D 
then that means... Exactly. One more person must have been there in the Langer. A third person who had a gun that could fire ten caliber bullets! <laughs> and if that's Such true... a little man! I know he is. And if that's true, it explains why Detective Arm fired warning shots. This third person fired at Detective Arm and Director Cosmos with their gun. And in return, the detective fired her warning shots. Isn't that how it really went down, Director Cosmos? Ha ha ha! It looks like you've deduced my miraculous tale of survival. Yes, you're absolutely correct. The, mis the mystery person fired upon us. What's this now? What? You never breathed a word of any of this to me before. Ha ha ha! Well, all great men have a secret or two, don't you know? <sighs> Foolish old geezer. Director Cosmos really has been hiding the presence of a third person all along? Director Cosmos, I want you to testify to the court about what you really saw! You may be a very great man, but in my courtroom you're just another witness. You won't receive special treatment here. Now please give an accurate testimony. All right, what I really saw at the scene. Detective Arm and I rushed to the control room all together. In the lingerie, we saw a figure standing in the middle of the room and Taryn on the floor. It was still in the control room to the east when the figure fired at us. Given that there was no third person in the Langer when the witness entered it, does this mean the person who fired the gun had to have been the defendant? Not necessarily. It's still possible that it was someone else. Most likely, as soon as Detective Arm and Director Cosmos discovered this person, they escaped through the southern door, the one that didn't have a security lock. Objection! Double-edged swords are a tricky lot. Mishandle one, and it is you who is cut down. Shut the fuck up, Blackwell. Huh? Your reasoning could apply if Space Boy were the killer as well. Think about it. After being discovered, he could have fired the 10 caliber gun. Detective Arm would have responded by firing two warning shots. I love this gun sound effect they have. It's like so pew, pew. like old westerny, yeah. All he had to do was feign unconsciousness to invent the possibility of a third party, of a third person. But Mr. Starbuck didn't have a gun in his possession when he was found by police. Nor has a gun been nor has a gun been found at the crime scene. Its absence can only be explained if there was a third party who took it with them. Objection! Recall the existence of a trash chute in the boarding lingerie. The defendant could have simply thrown the gun down the chute. There's so many more complications if your story is true than if our story is true. Objection! But you can't deny the possibility of a third person leaving with the weapon! Objection! It's up to you to prove that possibility. And I trust you haven't forgotten my little piece of decisive evidence. What evidence? Why, the detonator switch that was found in Mr. Starbuck's pocket, naturally. 
The most compelling evidence of all that tells us he is the culprit. Uh, I I did forget about all that. Okay, but if he if 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 he is the fucking guy and he had the time to throw his face his, his gun into the trash chute, why wouldn't he throw the fucking bomb? Like it's such a Come on. Look, your boldness, how deliciously obvious it is that they lack the evidence to rival mine. Wow, he sliced our third person theory to ribbons and served it to us, just like that. But he didn't, Athena. Yes, well, I have a question of my own, actually. That bullet that the mysterious figure shot. What did it hit, exactly? It hit me. So does that mean you're a... A, a ghost? <laughs> what the fuck? Are you serious? Yes, he said the thing. I was wondering when you would realize it was <laughs> He's just gaslighting the judge into thinking this man is a ghost. Director Cosmos is an authentic, bona fide ghost. He can even pass through walls. Holy shit. Damn, now this game's finally interesting. Heek! Prosecutor Blackwell, shame on you for teasing the nice old idiot, gentlemen. <laughs> hmm. Your boldness, it was all in jest. Please show yourself again. Uh, are you sure? <clears throat> in, in that case... How did you manage to survive being shot, Director Cosmos? Ha ha ha! I'm glad you asked. It was a miracle. A miracle befitting a great history making figure such as myself. Is it a hat one miracle? The bullet hit my glorious oh. Medal of Honor, whereby it ricocheted, thus saving my life. It actually did, that's insane. What? We did not notice them until now, that's fun. It's a good detail. That, that's unbelievable. I have to check this out. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. There's one extra Gyaxa star. The odds are literally astronomical. I guess it really was a miracle. It's beginning to really feel like the cosmos is watching out for Director Cosmos. But why did you conceal this information, Director Cosmos? Good-ass question. <laughs> great man such as myself has to hide things on occasion. The fucking no Shinji how getting much the robot pose. He is, he is asking a traumatized teenager to get into a robot that is his mom in mm. this pose. <laughs> yeah. It is the plight of the truly great. It may be hard for this generation to understand. I don't know, but it sounds fishy to me. What else is he hiding? Let's just cross-examine him and see what we can find out. Now then, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Get in the spaceship, Starbuck. Get in the spaceship, Starbuck. <sighs> Detective Arm and I rushed to the control room. In the Langer, we saw a figure standing in the middle of the room and tearing on the floor. Press here. But it was so dark that you couldn't see this figure's face. Isn't that right? Yes, the room was as deep and dark as outer space itself. 
Speaking of outer space, during the Hat One launch seven years ago, <laughs> I... If it's about that Hat One miracle again, you can sod off and tell it to a stray mutt. Wow, he said sod off. Ha <laughs> ha Excellent idea! The reason why the animal world shouldn't hear of my greatness? What the fuck? And so they shall. But first, your testimony. What happened next? Some control rooms and keys from the figure. Oh. Boop, boop. Hold it! Boop, boop. So, in other words, you were fired at while you were in the control room door. That is correct. There's something not quite right about that. Director Cosmos, the bullet this person fired hit you, isn't that right? Yes, it was a miracle. A miracle befitting a great history-making figure such as myself. Okay, I mean, the contradiction is that the bullet, the 10 millimeter bullet, was found in the opposite corner of the room. The bullet the figure fired hit me while I was in the control room. But as the cosmos would have it, the bullet bounced off my glorious Medal of Honor. In that case, the bullet should have wound up somewhere around the control room door. So, okay, so Director Cosmos was in the control room to the east. And while he was there, he was shot at by someone with a 10 caliber gun. But the bullet hit his metal, so he was able to escape with his life. He's a very lucky man. No wonder people think he's great. Hey, I'm pretty lucky myself. So if he's a great man, then I'm king of all the cosmos. That's got to be a fucking uh, uh, Katamari Damacy reference, right? I was right? going to say, maybe he's going for... Maybe, yeah, maybe. I mean, well... It's called yeah, king probably. of all the cosmos, right? Like, that's yeah, such a specific yeah, yeah. wording. Right, but we're also still talking... Yeah, no, I guess I guess they take advantage of the fact that we're talking about cosmos to make a, a double joke there. Mm -hmm. Objection! For a second, I thought the I thought the music didn't stop. <laughs> Director Cosmos, I believe you are telling this great court a glorious lie. A great man like me tell a lie? Have you ever heard of such a thing in all of history? No, famous and powerful people telling lies certainly never happened. Couldn't be doesn't this. Play, doesn't, doesn't seem possible. Uh -huh. My accusation is based on the positions of the people who were in the lingerie. According to your testimony, you and Detective Arm were near the control room door. And the mystery figure was standing in the middle of the boarding lingerie. If, as you say, the figure fired the gun at you from this position, then the bullet would have traveled in this direction. However, we found the 10 caliber bullet here. Oh! This trajectory and where the bullet was actually found contradict each other. Director Cosmos, where were you really when you were being shot at? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the human merry-go-round. Objection! Don't tell me you've forgotten already. Didn't the witness himself just tell you? The bullet hit his medal. Of this, there is no mistake. Objection! But in that case, the bullet should have been found near the east side of the room. Are you trying to explain that you can exp are you trying to say that you can explain this inconsistency? Of course. Oh shit. I didn't think so. What? 
Okay, but if you consider just not explaining it, <laughs> but like, good, good job. Not to, <laughs> like just just leave it just leave it as a mystery. That could be kind of fun for me. Could you not explain it as a treat? <laughs> as a treat. Oh, great director Cosmos. Yes. Is there something you'd like me to expound upon? You are, in fact, in the control. You were in fact, in the control room to the east, were you? Not. <laughs> Thank you. You were looking into the lingerie from the door to the south. Is that right? Not. <laughs> What are you getting at? Use your own brain. Your head must have some other you have some use other than housing that bird's nest. Bird's nest? Why does everyone pick on my hair? I mean Director Cosmos and the detective witnessed this scene from the southern door. The killer fired at them there, and that is why the bullet was found in the south. Huh. That makes some sense, actually. Also, the witness being at the southern door is rather favorable for the prosecution. Huh? I've got a b -b 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 bad feeling about this. How about it, Director? If you don't tell the truth this time. And there it goes. I'll kill you! Don't! <laughs> <laughs> His handcuffs! You will become but rust upon my sword. I relish the chance to cut down a great man. All right, I'll tell the truth. Just put your sword away. Uh, you are correct. I, the great Yuri Cosmos, was looking into the room from the southern door. What? It's the complete opposite of all the testimony he's given so far. And now you have lost your possibility that a third person was in the room. But... Have we? <laughs> I have. Well, that's just not true. How? The director and the detective were near the southern door. Meaning... The killer couldn't have escaped through there. Oh, the control room door has a lock on it or something, a key card. The western door required print recognition. The corridor beyond was filled with smoke. The only escape route left was the eastern control room door. And the only way to get through there was with Director Cosmos's fingerprints. Okay, but have you considered? the trash heap exit. Ugh. In short, there would be no escape for any third person had there been one. Ugh. My third person just disappeared. Like, in one of Trucy's mad... Okay, okay, I thought I was going to say something way worse. Like, in one of Trucy's magic tricks. I won't talk about where they go, though. My third, my third person just disappeared in Trucy's panties! No! Order! Order in the court! Director Cosmos, why did you tell such an outrageous lie? Great men have to lie sometimes. <laughs> you are covering for the defendant. Isn't that right? Yes. It was all for the love of men. <laughs> if I said I was in the if I said I was in the Eastern control room. It 
would mean the culprit could have escaped through the southern door. It would have meant that there could have been a third person. All I wanted to do was protect Starbuck. I said I was in the control room to invent an escape route for a third person. What a convoluted lie. Was he really covering for the defendant? It looks like we've come to a conclusion. That the defense's argument, the possibility of a third person, has crumbled. No! <laughs> it's Jova. Thank you. Yikes. The judge is about to hand down his verdict. Think, Phoenix. Think! This is the perfect time to try and turn my thinking around. If a third person had no way of escaping the scene. What if one of the people at the scene was the third person? Wait, what if the whole premise is all wrong? Oh, and Clay's it's not Jover. Still alive. <laughs> it's not Jover. We can come Barack from this. <laughs> Time to play my trump card. <laughs> uh, what's the one for Kamala? What, what are we saying for Kamala? Kamalama Lama? Kamalama Ding Dong. Kamalama Ha. Kamalami Hama. Kamalame Ha. Ooh. Is that something? Is that anything? Kamalame Ha. I like the Kamalame Ha. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Anime fans, get out the vote. <laughs> Lend her your energy. Commencing, come along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waltz with us, Tim Waltz with us. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Director Cosmo said that he and Detective Arm rushed to the scene together. What if that premise isn't true? What if one of them reached the scene before the other one? If that person entered the Langer, then they would be the third person. Hey guys, how should I respond to this message? Like I'm, the, I, this message from a number I don't have on my phone that's never texted me before that just says, when do you have time? I think we should talk. Uh, I mean... <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty you nervous. Always... I, 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 this is obviously not a real call, yeah, and I'm yeah. still nervous. Oh God, what do we have to talk about? That's oh, yeah. pretty good no, to the marketer one. You gotta, um, you, gotta, you gotta lean into it. You gotta, you gotta tell, keep tell yes him, and Tell them next Wednesday at 8 p.m., and then when they be like, call me, and we can do it live on stream. And I'll live stream the conference. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. There you go. I have some free really time next idea. Wednesday at 8 p.m. Just Eastern pick up standard. the phone and be like, hi, this is Bridge. You're live. There's 500 people watching You're right now. <laughs> the defendant is the only one who could have killed the victim and shot at the director. There doesn't appear to be any room for argument against these claims. I will now render my verdict. Objection! Please wait, Your Honor. There is still one possibility. Oh? This had better be good, Mr. Wright. There is one and only one person who could have escaped from the scene. And that person would be the first person who arrived on the sheen scene. The first person shooting. <laughs> the first person who arrived. The first person who arrived. It was Sheen. <laughs> hey there. Hey there. Hey there, Starbuck. God. Oh, oh, Sheen, I think we should get out of here. Hate it. Hate it. Shut up, Kyle. Got a blast. And then I started blasting. <laughs> it was Jimmy Neutron. Oh, Jimmy. It looks like your shots. You shot Clay Terra, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> then, upon entering the boarding lingerie, the second person to arrive came via the southern door. That's why the first person fled from the room. 
using an escape route which was accessible only to them. Oh, are we about to accuse Yuri Cosmos? Very well. Let's hear more about this theory. Who is this one person who could have escaped from the boarding lodge? Hey, oh, Yuri. it's Judy! Uh, <laughs> I forgot that she was in this case. Yeah, kind of. honestly, honestly, don't know why her profile is here. Yeah. Yeah, it's tenuous at best. Uh, it was Klonko. <laughs> the robot uprising has begun. <laughs> Uh, no, we're about to accuse Yuri Cosmos, who is 62, which uh, I guess that does kind of feel right. That yeah. tracks, yeah. yeah. More than most ages. More yeah, than more most ages. Age. Wait, how, how old? She's 37?! Damn. Good yeah. God! Yeah, I guess she looks younger than that. Also, she has a mole on her neck, and Candace's arm has a mole on her face. Coincidence? <sighs> Yes! I think not. I think not, <laughs> Coincidence, liberals. almost certainly. Uh, alright, it's fucking Yuri Cosmos. Take that! It's Yuri Lowenthal. <laughs> Did it again. What? But, but that's... Mr. Wright! What are you claiming here? Of all the people who were at the scene, only one, only the witness could have escaped. Director is the only one with authority to open the control room door, after all. But... but that means... Exactly. The true identity of the third person is our current witness. Director Yuri Cosmos! <laughs> what? What? Order! Order in the court, I say! Mr. Wright, you will explain yourself in more detail! I assert that Director Cosmos arrived at the scene before Detective Arm and entered the boarding lingerie alone. Detective Arm arrived, af arrived after that and saw a suspicious figure who was actually Director Cosmos standing in the lingerie. And that's why she fired those two warning shots. God, I've been hit! I've been hit on the starboard side! Captain Wright! It's a direct hit on the enemy ship, sir! A magnificent shot! Warning shots fired from the enemy ship! Oh. Prepare to intercept! Cosmos, you have told a lie in this court once again. I've been hit! I've been hit on the port side! The enemy has called in reinforcements! <laughs> really good, the way you're doing the spinning with the voicing. It was really nice. Earth to Cosmos Control Center, requesting permission that you return to reality. But my ship will not go down to anything less than the ultimate weapon of evidence. Objection! But I do have evidence. In fact, you could say that your battleship bears its scar. <laughs> A trade! What? I see. Director Cosmos is the third person, or a black will saw. This third per- oh, we don't need this flashback. This third person fired at Detective Arm and Director Cosmos with their gun. And in return, the detective fired her warning shots. Isn't that how it really went down, Director Cosmos? Ha ha ha! It looks like you've deduced my miraculous tale of survival. Yes, you're absolutely correct. The mystery person fired upon us. Dr. Cosmos must have been the one who fired the 10 caliber gun! Detective Arm discovered him in the lingerie. It only makes sense that he would have turned and shot at her! Therefore, the evidence on the director's body is of a different kind of relevance than before! Once we compare it against another piece of evidence, 
The mark that you've received from the third party will be all the proof we need. To prove that you were the one there in the Langer. <laughs> Brace for further impact! Comparison against this piece of evidence will prove that you were the one in the Langer. I'm assuming the, it's the turbo. big bullet. Yeah. 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 38 caliber bullet found on the floor at the scene didn't hit the oxygen tank. I mean, technically either bullet works. Sure. Because well, the no, one was his. Small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hit Director Cosmos's metal. If we have that ricochet mark on the metal analyzed, I'm sure the caliber will match up. And if that mark proves to be from a 38 caliber bullet, it will prove that you are the third person we've been looking for. <laughs> the bridge is destroyed, losing altitude, all hands abandoned ship. If that's true, then what about the bullet that hit the oxygen tank? Uh, it was the 10 caliber bullet. It was the 10 caliber bullet. In other words, it was the bullet fired by Yuri Cosmos. Isn't that right, Director? No! You've got it all wrong! What? The engines have started again? It's a miracle! I'm not going down yet! Witness! Stop this at once and confess the truth! <laughs> Witness, we're really fucking annoying. If you don't want the history books to say that a great man was a great liar... Then accept your fate and tell the truth. I'd say more like a bad life. Yeah. Are you giving me orders? Me? The great director of the Cosmos Space Center? Yeah. The Cosmos revolves around me. <laughs> Someone get me off of this thing! Bro, just, just step backwards. See, with all this spinning, I feel like he's just gotta be like vomiting everywhere. <laughs> Order! Order in the court! And will someone please stop the witness from spinning? Thank goodness we were able to stop him from spinning off the face of the earth. Stop the earth? I'd like to get off. Jane! Stop this crazy thing! <laughs> While he was twirling, I took the liberty of running an analysis on the mark on the metal. How? He was still wearing it. <laughs> It's very hard to get it off. Of her. <laughs> it was made by a thirty-eight caliber bullet, matching it with the size of Detective Arms' firearm. <laughs> Are you ready to confess the truth, witness? No, you've got it all wrong. This is just a misunderstanding. Is he going to start piling on more lies? It looks like it. But no matter how many lies he tells, I'll just expose them one by one. I'll make that big liar tell the truth. I'll make you eat those words. Hey, look at that. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Get a little. It's weird because they didn't even take like a break. They didn't take a recess for that. Yeah, they was like, uh, yeah, pause. they just kind of were like, all right, and pause. I feel like they had an easy out of being like, oh, we had to take a recess to get the analysis on the bullet in the metal, but nah, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but I do know no what to tell that. you, folks. That's gonna do it for another Ace Attorney with an actual lawyer. Uh, again, hey, watch us live YouTube. 
7 30 p.m eastern time you're all the best but until next time stick around for art because court is adjourned society with oh shit i love drawing pokemon or fakemon i don't feel like i do it enough in the server so here's yuri cosmog for the moment get in the bag yuri eric beddington with i hope i made the hope probe just a little bit more hopeful than before first spark brush roll once there and now hope probe probe nagito i don't know why i keep un unintentionally drawing tumblr sexy mint in the mouth god i saw the 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 zoomed out version and when i was reading it i was like i hope you didn't do what i think you did and you did it um so thank you i hate it it's very good though this is incredibly cursed uh gamma with some more pictures of clonko i knit him and designed the pattern myself i also made the back of his head open because of the sprite where aura digs around in his head which ends up proving useful for carrying around my things at conventions that's so good yo what a good detail you made this robot head a fucking purse. That's fucking awesome. Uh, little ghost with hi guys. This week I'm back with more Ace Attorney characters as Naruto characters. Uh, we have Clay Terran. Very, very nice. Hell yeah. Uh, we have Apollo and Clay. They're best friends. I'm sure nothing will ever happen. Oh no. Uh, and Apollo Sharingan. uses his Sharingan. Uh, just to be clear, he did get it because of Clay's death, but he did not kill him. Oh shit, you don't have to kill the person to unlock the man Geku of Shining God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, what's the fun of that? <laughs> yeah, very good. This last one is like insane with like the background spirals of the uh, the perceived mechanic. Also, yeah, I appreciate you made the uh, the headband be crossed out. Hell yeah. Sebastian with, hi, I'm not breaking my tradition of art every week. The photography of my Miriam Scuttlebutt cosplay that I promised. First one was professionally shot, the other from a video I was featured in that promoted the convention. Also, if you look closely, I'm wearing a SpongeBob band-aid. Yeah. yeah! It's so good! It's so good! I hope you had the best time. I hope everybody loved it. Uh, I love the second tinier camera that you have in the second photo. That's so good. Reaper with, hi, it's me. Last week, West of the Myrits Star reminded me of Monster Prom. By the way, thank you. That means a lot to me, actually. So that inspired me to design some of the attorney guys as monsters. Yeah, very cool. Heck yeah. Phoenix awesome. Dragon, yeah. Edgeworth is a unicorn. There's no reason for this, just vibes. Uh, Trucy <laughs> as a mimic, very good. Apollo is a Tenno. She also has hand, uh, eyes on her hands like Apollo. <clears throat> Maya is a witch. Makes total sense. And Clavier is a Gorgon. Ah. He does have That's snakes. Awesome. He just wears a wig, lol. <laughs> That's good. Yo, I love these. Ren with Heyo, bringing some doodles of my wife, Aura, today. I really love her designing character. I think she's super fun, even though I have to 1v1 the space buns every time I draw her. I don't know what's going on with her hair, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, no, this is, uh, this is really good. And, uh, the second one is a dra my drawing I finished a couple days ago. I rarely color ever since I switched drawing programs, but I think it turned out quite nicely. Yeah! The shading on this is really okay. good. Like, of the lighting and everything. So good. Firefly with, I promised myself that I'd draw Ponko, and I managed. Did I think that it would be cute for them to both hang out? Yes! Did I also take the Sonic Mario joke and the fact that they're both robots as the excuse to draw metal, technically? Also, yes. <laughs> Registering. Hello, Firefly. <laughs> Hi, Ongo. <laughs> Damn. Very good. Uh, Scott, as well, with Feminist Black Whale Miku Binder. I don't know if I should elaborate or not. No, you don't have to. Uh, incredible. <laughs> Incredible meme. Love it. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Very good. Ween, there's a new collaboration between Capcom and whatever company in Shanghai. So there's an official art going around featuring some Ace Attorney characters in cute panda theme outfits, but they left Athena out again. Justice for my girl. They didn't draw her, but Simon is there. Also, the pose is kind of... It's not just me, right, guys? No. Uh, this Simon pose, why the fuck did they make it like this? He's like, he's pushing his boobs together. And the, like, the posing of the hit, like, he's doing this on purpose. He knows what he's doing here. Um, <laughs> also, the fucking, the, the fairly odd parent's dad yeah. is Athena. This is why I put my new, my new outfit. 
If I had one! <laughs> uh, Val, with I'm burnt out on art right now, but I managed to make some MS Paint memes. Oh my god, I'm a robot or a man, please. <laughs> and my girlfriend keeps making fun of me, or fun of this line, so I drew it. I'm taking a leaf. Yo, literally, Val and and Leia, I almost made that joke in this in the stream uh, when he said I'm taking a leaf of absence. Uh, I was like, Charlie, no, uh, and I <laughs> held myself back from making that. Uh, but very, very good. Map out a guard with Ola. Today's my second anniversary of me being a Save the Team fan. Hell yeah, here's to many more. Anyways, enjoy. Here it is, part one of four of The Project. The project was made to celebrate this anniversary. Oh, shit! Ah! <laughs> wow. We've got handshaking, yeah, palms are sweaty, very, very good. Squatters rights, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, hell yeah, squatters rights for ghosts. Kobe, the smartest and fastest of Doctor's Cobras, amazing. Bailiff smack the pee pee. What's your name? Uh, blood for the blood god. Uh, just two guys vibing in their tubs. God, that tub stream. What a fucking moment. Damon Gant donating $50. That's, I have A1 steak sauce, Jakey. Partner, you have to help me. There's this weirdo following me nonstop. <laughs> hey, I'm that weirdo. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Incredible. Uh, hell yeah, I'm very excited for the rest of these. Uh, Matt Pat and Guard, uh, dog bless you for, for cataloging a lot of our, our, our best bits. Uh, Jarek with no time for colors tonight. <laughs> Fucking him as Sam Reich. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> Very good. Saf with hi, I'm back on my home and also motivated to draw again. Uh, anyways, the robot beat her herself. Wes, I know I can't fix her. That's the point. The background is blurry because I got lazy. And if you blur it, you don't have to make the color. Make it more than color blobs. Yippee. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is really, really That's fucking good. good. Holy shit. Uh, the coloring, like the lighting coming off of uh, Klonko's face is like such a good detail. And you, you, you really crushed it. This is, yeah, uh, this is fucking awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, CK with Ra, I finished in time. I love the bit with all the random characters in the office, so I had to draw it for myself. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get, get ready, Bridge. Hey. Apollo! Uh, Furio Tigre? What? Pearl Fay! Waki Kataki? <laughs> Chris isn't here, but. Yeah. Iris Wilson, Bazooie! Don't forget me! How many people work at this office? <laughs> All of them. All of them. <laughs> uh, TK, uh, CK to TK, uh, with Tizai, TK Chains Octopus, back at it again with my insanity. People saying Aura can't be fixed, but hey, who said she needs fixing? She can re rewire my brain any day. Rough drawing for the day. <laughs> I fucking love this the image of her is so good and then yeah the the meme in in the background please what a chance you can lobotomize me instead of Clonko. please 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 listen uh chrono wizard with not gonna lie i fell asleep and missed most of the stream but i was able to finish up most of my sketches based on last stream sadly no Ponko or aura tonight for me but hopefully the next time for now here's some random stuff <laughs> yuri low in cosmos <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you must be Mr. Wright, Apollo's mentor. Huh? Uh, yeah, th that's me. Mentor, hmm? <laughs> I could get used to that. I am the mentor. D dementor? <laughs> Potterhead, overactive imagination, critically on Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, that does track for Athena. <laughs> uh, and what's the... Shikanoko Noko Noko Koshi Tantan? Shikanoko Noko Noko Koshi Tantan Tan. Shikanoko Noko Noko Koshi Tantan Tan. Apollo's face in the second one is really fucking incredible. Dude, I, I haven't got a chance to watch my dear friend Nokatan, but I've seen a lot of memes. Seems mm. pretty funny. Hell yeah. You're all the best. 
Until next time, woo, be cool.